So a few years back, there was a study conducted in Florida, which happens to be the place that the subject of today's video is from. The study showed that 70% of lottery winners in Florida go completely broke within five years. Now, why would that be? I think one of the reasons is because they hadn't actually had to go through the struggle to earn that money. And that struggle is what allows you to develop the tools to keep the money. But with that being said, there are lottery winners who invest in those tools after getting their money. Take Brad Duke, for example. Brad Duke won a lottery back in 2005. He took home $220 million. And not five years later, not 10 years later, but 14 years later, He's still not broke. As a matter of fact, he's turned that 220 mil into a billion dollars. Dude more than quadrupled his bread. He was given a gift in winning a lottery, but he didn't waste the gift. He didn't take the gift for granted. He further developed the gift and ended up getting even more out of it. That's how you do it. The subject of today's video, Kelvin Benjamin, won the genetic lottery, if you will. Dude, 6'6", 240 pounds. And at his peak, he could run a 4'6", 40 big hands great leaping ability he started football late but dominated immediately thanks to his genetic lottery winnings but just like 70 percent of the other florida lottery winners only five years after he hit the football jackpot and made it to the nfl he's pretty much lost it all falling directly into that other 70 percent in this video we'll follow the football story of kelvin benjamin and hopefully this can serve as a warning and a little bit of a lesson on how to take your lottery winnings and get even more out of it if you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe and enable your notifications i have tons and tons of other videos like this also like and share the video so that the channel can continue to grow without further ado this is what happened to kelvin benjamin Kelvin Benjamin grew up in Florida, where he was raised by his mother. It wasn't his dad's fault that he wasn't around, as he was unfortunately deported back to Jamaica when Kelvin was only two years old. During his early years, Kelvin struggled with school. Before he even made it out of middle school, dude had already failed two grades being held back twice. He spent time in a juvenile detention center and just all around got off to a rough start in life. Little did he know that the God-given ability that he possessed on the football field lie dormant inside of him. When high school rolled around, Kelvin attended Glade Central, a football powerhouse. For Kelvin, it was something he wasn't interested in participating in at first. That all changed when his boy Greg Dent, a young wide receiver at Glaze Central, suggested that Kelvin join the football team. Dude clearly had the physical tools as a 6'2 sophomore and seemed like a pretty good athlete. Also, Greg was fully aware of Kelvin's trouble in school and his trouble out on the streets. So, Greg held him down. He took dude under his wing. And that's not to be overlooked. You gotta think about it. Greg played the exact same position, bro. So, we talking about a powerhouse school, so there's already a lot of competition at the position greg could have been selfish and been like yo if this cat come out here you're gonna take my spot but no he got his boy on the right track knowing he was more talented than him and greg went on to play football also at florida state by the way but knowing that kelvin was more talented than him he got him out there got him on the right track so that's what's up man shout out to greg with that said upon a little bit more research we can see that greg went on to have some issues of his own when Kelvin got on the field, at first, he didn't understand how to truly play the wide receiver position. But if you told him to run deep, then jump up and catch the ball over somebody, dude was an absolute natural. Now, this is important because when Kelvin first started playing football, his coach described him as a hard worker. Now, that is probably the last thing you think about when you think about Kelvin Benjamin, the football player. But when he first got out on the field, this is what was being said about him, you know? Early on, he grinded daily to improve at the nuances of the game and the wide receiver position. While he would never become an amazing route runner, he definitely improved dramatically in those early days. Now, anybody who's ever learned a new skill, you know, when you first start something, you're gonna see the greatest um, return on your investment. You know what I mean? But as you get better and better at that thing, it takes more and more work to see smaller and smaller results. Kelvin learned how to better read defenses and how to use his body to create space. And nobody wanted to tackle this big ass dude 
after he hogged in a pass back in high school. By the time Kelvin's senior year rolled around, dude became a monster and rivals rated him the number eight wide receiver in the country. But the two years he'd been held back came back to bite him. After a player is 19 years and nine months old, he can no longer play high school sports. So high school sports clock is over, which is fair by the way, cause you got like 16 year olds out there and you're literally a whole man. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention at this point, Kev was 6'6", six, six, like 230. So, yeah. Yo, can you imagine your little 5'7 cousin who in the 10th grade having to cover this dude? Like, unbelievable. So Kelvin went into his senior season knowing his clock would run out after only seven games. He could have opted to go Juco for that year, but I mean, come on. Even though from a career standpoint, that might've been the best move, who really wants to become the absolute goat in your high school and then leave early? Seven games as a senior was all Kelvin needed to get a scholarship offer to pretty much any college he wanted to attend. He chose Florida State, wanting to stay close to home. Now, Kelvin thought he'd walk into Florida State and play day one, but he was in for a rude awakening. Yeah, you're physically talented, but bro, you have a lot to learn about how to play the wide receiver position. So he redshirted in year one. It was said that Kelvin struggled with his weight throughout his time at Florida State. Now it doesn't directly say why, but you know, being in that exact same position years back, your motivation kind of wanes a bit. Once you go in there, you think you're gonna make a splash and then you get redshirted. And there was a lot of buzz coming out of Florida State practice early on for Kelvin, especially from the players. They were really excited because dude was making plays. Like he can jump up and one-handed over two cats. But the coaches were concerned because he was making a lot of mistakes and he wasn't in the best shape. You know, things that a coach would worry about. Eventually, Kelvin got himself into shape and the following year as a uh, red shirt freshman, dude caught 30 passes for 495 yards and four touchdowns. That's really good for your first year on the field. Then as a red shirt sophomore in 2013, he went over a thousand yards, okay? He doubled his total from the previous year. And then on top of that, dude scored 15 TDs. So yeah, he had a ride. Kelvin was a part of a talented Florida State squad led by quarterback Jameis Winston. That squad would go on to an undefeated season, but found themselves down 21 to three versus Auburn in the national title game. Now, Florida State scored 21 points in the fourth quarter and capped it off with a last second drive that ended with a Jameis to Kelvin touchdown pass, giving Florida State their first lead since the opening drive of the game with only 13 seconds left. Florida State would go on to win that game and Kelvin's clutch catch at the end would further cement his status as a first round draft pick. After that season, Kelvin decided it was time for him to go pro. Scouts were critical of inconsistent hands, his lack of precise route running, but come on, man, dude, 6'6", 240 at this point, he can high point the ball and knows how to use his body to make contested catches. He's a first round pick. I mean, it just is what it is. At the combine, Kelvin measured in a 6'6", 240 and ran a 4'6", 1. The 2014 NFL draft featured lots of wide receiver talent. Sammy Watkins, Mike Evans, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, Allen Robinson, Devontae Adams, Brandon Cooks. I mean, the list goes on. And of course, Kelvin Benjamin, right? The unfortunate thing is that of those eight wide receivers I just named, Kelvin's the only one who isn't currently, five years later, a star or at least a starter on his current team. Kelvin's not even currently on a team. Kelvin's NFL career started with a bang. He teamed up with Cam Newton and caught 73 passes for 1,008 yards and nine touchdowns. I mean, what a rookie performance. The following year, however, Kelvin tore his ACL in training camp, which obviously sucks. It sucks even worse for a guy who is naturally bigger and has trouble controlling his weight. Coming in, my expectation was that he had blown up in weight after this injury, but that's not the case. Now here's the thing, when Kelvin was down with his injury, Cam Newton had his best season as a pro, okay? So his number one receiver goes down, he has his best season as a pro, wins MVP, all right? The Panthers have their most successful season while Kelvin was on the team. They go to the Super Bowl, all right? So the quarterback win MVP and the team go to the Super Bowl all while you're out. That can happen to any player, 
but it had to be a little bit of a hard pill to swallow for Kelvin. When he came back the following year, 2016, his targets had dropped from 146 during his rookie year to 118. All right, his overall numbers dipped, but only slightly, as Cam had began to spread the ball around a little bit more and was relying more on Greg Olson in particular. Kelvin's numbers had dipped, but only slightly, but still, it was affecting him mentally because as the season went on, his efforts and performance took a noticeable dip. He gave up on plays and got really frustrated when things didn't go his way in the offense. By week 14, dude had all but checked out. And when he ran this half-hearted route getting Cam Newton picked off versus the Chargers, he gives no effort to tackle the DB, who goes on to return this for a touchdown. Now, to add injury to insult, Cam Newton ends up aggravating his shoulder for the first time on that play. All right, we talking the shoulder that still bothers Cam to this day. It all started on this play and it was due to a lack of effort by Kelvin Benjamin. Now Cam can throw this ball a little bit more to the outside, this is a fact, but Kelvin Benjamin is 250 pounds. I mean, if you give a little bit of effort here, this probably doesn't get picked off. And even if it does, you can at least make the tackle, man, come on. Despite that, current Giants GM Dave Gettleman decided to pick up Kelvin's fifth year option. I mean, dude had been good as a rookie so who could really blame Gettleman for hoping he could get back to that rookie form it would only take a small attitude adjustment on the part of Kelvin they picked up his option which gave dude another eight million dollars on top of the eight mil he originally signed for Kelvin was breaking in the dough unfortunately it appears that Kelvin took that eight mil and just start partying and eating and probably drinking and who the hell knows but he showed up the otas like 50 pounds overweight he picked up 40 pounds in just a few months since the season had ended and this time he was not nursing an injury the weight concerns that had bothered him at florida state had now come back and they came back with a vengeance a few months after the option was picked up and while kelvin was still battling to get his weight back down tragedy struck his mom suddenly passed away. Now again, this is his mother, so I shouldn't even have to explain how this will affect a, a person, you know what I mean? I'm not even gonna go into it because y'all already can identify with that emotion. You don't need me to, to pull it out, you know what I mean? This is another thing I kinda knew a little bit about and it was another preconceived notion. I thought the knee injury happened, then you know his mom passed and then he gained the weight, but it didn't happen in that sequence at all. The knee injury happened, he shook back from the knee injury, then he gained the weight, then his mom passed, okay? So neither of those things was the cause of the weight gain, and it said that his mom passed away suddenly, so if it was suddenly, that makes me assume that she wasn't sick for a while, so, you know, he wasn't stressing over that, and that's not what caused him to gain the weight, so. Now, Kelvin made the decision, likely being pressured by the team a little bit, to skip the grievance process to get back to help the squad. He would later reveal that he held resentment about that, but at the time, here's what he had to say about returning to the team so soon. I was in a dark place, but being around my bros, it's crazy how I feed off their energy. Love mom, keep watching over me. Now you see a lot of athletes kind of go and play and dedicate um, you know, performances to loved ones that they've lost, but each person is different. And if you're not ready to return, you need to go through the grieving process, bro. You really need to go through it because if you don't, you're gonna harbor resentment, which is exactly what happened with Kelvin Benjamin. Now, according to reports, during that difficult time, Kelvin leaned heavily on backup quarterback Joe Webb and on starting quarterback Cam Newton. Matter of fact, here's a quote from Cam during that difficult time. My hat goes off to him. He's keeping it all in a row. I know there are some days it gets to him and I try to give him as much space as possible. Which suggests that Cam wasn't the one badgering him during this time. He was respecting what he was going through and he was showing love. Just, yo, the fact that you here, bro, you know what I mean? Like showing love like that. So what comes later is just, it feels out of left field. Now, midway through the 2017 season, Kelvin Benjamin demanded a trade. At that time, the reason he gave was the fact that he wasn't being featured in the offense. When Kelvin left, Cam Newton was obviously asked about what he thought about Kelvin. Here's what he had to say. An unbelievable teammate. He comes to work each and every day. 
You may not be a talkative person all the time, but I guarantee when you want people in a foxhole, Kelvin Benjamin is a person that you want. So right there you see kind of how Cam felt about it. Now, I can even just hearing that though still, him saying he may not be a talkative person all the time where their personalities may have clashed a bit because if Kelvin is a little more quiet and secluded, I mean, Cam is obviously the opposite of that. You know what I'm saying? He's flashy, he's emotional. So I can see where that could create some issues, but still, this next thing was completely just, here's what Kelvin had to say about Cam. It was a bad fit from the get-go. If you would have put me with any other quarterback, let's be real, you know what I'm saying? Any other accurate quarterback like Aaron Rodgers or Eli Manning or Big Ben, anybody. Quarterbacks with knowledge that know how to place the ball and give you a better chance to catch the ball. I just felt like I wasn't in that position. Well, damn, Kelvin. Like all the shots fired in the world, like that's a huge shot. I thought that was a weak move and a low blow back when Kelvin Benjamin did it. I still feel the exact same way today. So I was pretty happy when we got to this next thing. Kelvin Benjamin ended up getting traded to the Bills and the first time the Bills and the Panthers were scheduled to play, Cam approached Kelvin at midfield to discuss what Kelvin had said. Bro, I honestly love this move by Cam. I thought Kelvin was hella weak for saying that stuff in the media about him. And he just approached me and wanted to talk to him like, man, Kelvin seemed like he didn't even want to have the conversation, which is just really weak in my opinion. I mean, you said it in the media, just say it to me, you feel me? Kelvin Benjamin ended up blaming all his issues and shortcomings as a player on Cam Newton, who is obviously not a perfect player, not by any stretch, but Kelvin Benjamin completely failed to look in the mirror and take any accountability. Cam ain't the reason that you got overweight. He's not the reason that you didn't continue to improve your route running. He's not the reason you didn't add to your game. And I know hindsight is 2020, but as you look back, obviously his best years were with Cam Newton. He never even got close to the success that he had with the Panthers again. He didn't consider the fact that Cam force fed him the ball a ton. I mean, he forced it to him a lot, giving him ample opportunities to make plays. And what about the plays Cam kept alive with his feet, creating a scramble drill and making it easier for a guy like Kelvin, who's not a great route runner, to get open in the first place. Then there's the threat of the run with Cam, giving you one-on-one -on -one opportunities. So, you know, he didn't look at what Cam brought to the table. He only looked at what he didn't have. You know what I'm saying? Kelvin Benjamin continued to struggle during his time with Buffalo. He struggled with his weight, his body wasn't properly conditioned, and he began to pile on injuries. He had asked to be traded from the Panthers because he wasn't being featured in the offense anymore. But in 2017, before he was traded, he played eight games and had 51 targets, meaning he was on pace for a little over 100 targets on the season. With Buffalo, he'd only gotten 27 targets through six games. So he went from six targets per game to only four targets per game. If only he had appreciated the situation he was in before. Kelvin was released in December of that same season with a catch rate of only 35%, which was the absolute worst in the entire NFL. And taking a look at some of the info that came out of Buffalo, there's really no surprise why. Check this out. According to sports anchor Jenner Cottrell, Josh Allen once asked Kelvin if he wanted to work on some routes during pregame warmups. Kelvin Benjamin responded, no. Zay Jones's mom also said that her son had to tell Kelvin where to line up all the time, and it just wasn't a good look. Kelvin ended up getting a reputation for being lazy and unmotivated. It appears that he had began to think that his God-given ability, that genetic lottery that he hit, was all that he would ever need, not realizing that the league you're playing in now is full of people who hit the genetic lottery. But they also reinvested their gift and got more out of it. After being released from Buffalo, Kelvin got his wish. He was picked up by the Kansas City Chiefs with an opportunity to play with the young phenom quarterback who's taking over the league right now, Patrick Mahomes. Kelvin appeared in three games with the Chiefs and made two receptions for 26 yards. So he got an opportunity to play with the most talented quarterback in the league and still wasn't able to produce much or even convince the Chiefs to keep him around for more than three games. And as of now, this seems to be the end of Kelvin Benjamin's football journey as he's currently a free agent. Now with his tools, all he's gotta do is get in just phenomenal shape and I think somebody will give dude another shot. I mean, he has the ability, but it's really gonna take a mindset shift 
for him. Imagine if Cam Newton would have came out and threw the same shots that Kelvin Benjamin threw. Imagine if he would have came out, man, if you give me any other receiver who actually works hard, like Julio Jones or AJ Green, or you know what I mean? Like, what if he would have did that? Kelvin's lack of appreciation for his gifts caused him to just siphon from them and use them all up instead of reinvesting and actually growing the gift you know expanding and extending them the moral of the story is appreciate your gifts if you win the lottery or the genetic lottery or maybe the intellectual lottery whatever whatever your ability is whatever your talent is nurture that talent don't take it for granted max out your gift whatever that is be the bill duke of your thing not the kelvin benjamin of it Sorry, Kelvin, but that's just real, bro. Today, Kelvin's only 28 years old, and while his NFL career may be all but over, dude's got a ton of life left. Hopefully, he's matured, and he definitely has the capacity to do great things outside of football, or at least outside of the NFL, and who knows? Maybe he's even due for a comeback if he tries that. I'm definitely gonna be rooting for dude. But at this point, dude's career is a cautionary tale. My name is Flimlo Rouse, I'll let y'all next time, fellas. Yeah, I'm not no quitter Cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go get her